Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Uh, thanks for downloading today's show. And just a reminder, as always, Wake Up War Chan is brought to you by our friends at For the Table, Madison Social, Central and Township in the heart of College Town. From Tallahassee to Thomasville and from coast to Atlantic coast, it's time to wake up War Chant here on 97.9 ESPN Radio. And it's a very happy Monday morning, July the 24th to you and yours. You're currently listening to the voice of Ryan Kelly. I'm the director of digital media at WarChant.com. Drew Hickens on the other side of the glass making things work. Producer Drew, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. It's good to be here on a Monday. And, well... Uh, you know, I feel like we've been very, very fortunate throughout this offseason. I mean, we t- we try to stay college sports heavy. We try to st- we try to stay FSU heavy. I mean, the name of the show is Wake Up War Chant, to be honest with you. And I'll be honest with you, mid-July, that's not always the easiest thing to do. But for whatever reason, this summer, it has been miraculously easy to every day bring you some form of Florida State content. And the good news is it isn't, hey, well, I guess they got arrested or, well, he punched somebody or, well, he got caught. It hasn't been any of that. It's been a lot of good news for Florida State, and if you are a fan of recruiting, we've got a great show for you today. Yesterday, we recorded a very long conversation with Michael Langston. Uh, it goes about 21 minutes, so that's going to be a lion's share of this show today. You're going to hear from him. Uh, you're going to hear some of our thoughts more big picture-wise, and then we've got a couple other things to tackle into. But first of all, of course, we can't go an episode without thanking you for waking up with us here at 6 a.m. on 97.9 ESPN Radio or those streaming devices, including our own WTSM app, or maybe it's our podcast you're listening to. You probably have a place for that by now. Thank you so much for doing that. If you like the show, give us a good review, rate and subscribe to us. It helps us out and it helps you out. And finally, radio at warchant.com is your email address. At Wake Up Warchant is your Twitter account. And as always, we're brought to you by the good folks at For the Table, which is, of course, Madison Social, Central, and Township, all there in the heart of college town you go to warchant.com right now heck if you go to just about any major recruiting service website right now you're going to see at least something about florida state on the front page five count them five i'll say that again five new recruits for the garnet and gold over the weekend and that includes three in the 2018 class Drew, I mean, you, you usually expect a little bit out of these recruiting weekends, but you don't expect a halt like this. Yeah, I think it was big time. Uh, I got to tell you, too, another thing that I'm looking at, just because I'm I'm really into the, we've talked about it a ton on this show, obviously, the Justin Fields recruitment. I think it's big time that all of a sudden you get a lot of these guys after Justin Fields was down there and stayed a little bit longer than expected. And there's a lot of buzz coming around even after Friday Night Lights, Uh, from some things I read on even some Gator sites saying that even these Gator sites were willing to say the buzz around Justin Fields right now was that he was leaning Florida State is was the buzz not that he said that himself because he has not but I you know when you get these when you get these uh when you get these guys you start to wonder what's being said what's being said to these guys at these camps when they're because obviously they're all hanging out they're all talking to each other um Nobody commits to a place for for one guy, but people want to play with a guy like Justin Fields, especially these receivers we're bringing in. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, obviously. And I, y- you're right. You can't get five recru- uh, five commits in, in a, about a two day span was huge, especially for all the all the naysayers who have been freaking out about this cycle, saying that you know uh, we're just kind of sleepwalking through the summer and all, all we're doing is preparing for Bama and not recruiting at all and this and that and. It was just good. It was good to see us, you know, start to get some momentum going. You know, I, and I, I feel like sometimes that can be, that's just college sports fan, fan in general, to worry and freak about everything. But I have come to the point, especially me being more a passive recruiting guy, a guy, I mean, it's my job to keep up with it to a certain extent. But at the same time, if I'm looking for news, it's not the first thing I go looking for. J- just me in that instance. I have just kind of learned over the years with Jimbo Fisher. I will worry about it when something bad happens because every time people start to worry about Jimbo Fisher's class or worry about some of the issues, and don't get me wrong, you can poke and you can prod at any class. You can say, well, we should have got more receiver depth here. You know, we should have loaded up more on linebackers here. We should have gotten more defensive backs there or wherever. You can say that all you want, but at the end of the day, Florida State continues to churn out top 10 class after top 10 class after top 10 class. And as good as Florida State usually is closing after the season's over, 
Florida State doing work after a camp. And it's worth noting, Florida State football camps, yeah, sure, sometimes they do the things in the stadium at night, but it's not like, you know, Friday Night Lights down in Gainesville or some of those other places where there's just this sea of kids and just this sea of guys trying to get noticed and discovered. I mean, it's it's a different feel. It's it's a slightly different vibe than the rest of this stuff. And Florida State has been hugely successful. And, you know, you mentioned quarterback. Guys want to play for good dudes. And uh, you've seen that with Florida and Florida State this weekend. Marquez Ezzard, of course, the 2018 guy and the Rivals 250 for Florida State. And you kind of raise an eyebrow there and that, hmm, you know, we're not usually great at getting receivers. And there's a lot of buzz about a really good quarterback coming to Florida State. You do wonder, because those guys, you're right, they all do talk to each other. There's a vow of silence there that says, you know, hey, what are you hearing? What am I hearing? What? Are, I mean, everybody's, you, you're kind of all in the same boat. You're all in the same situation. You, you've you been there with people before. I've been there with people before. It's just natural. When, when you're in a situation that's kind of exclusive to you, you talk and you chat. And these guys are all talking and they're all chatting. And it just kind of makes you wonder, you're right, all these guys real quick. And Ezard's a guy, too, who was picking between Florida State and Georgia. Hopefully that's a good omen for other things to come. You need to continue to win that battle against Georgia. But again, Florida State is continually continuing to recruit the Georgia area well and Texas, which which is big, big things. And and, and Dossie, who, who at times has been questioned with his recruiting ability and his ability to coach him. And, you know, another name I keep seeing come up in these kids' recruitments that is kind of going under the radar, Tino Sanceri has had a big impact on a lot of these kids' recruiting, and people aren't talking about I mean, listen, I, I really like Damian Craig, obviously. He's a, but Tino Sanceri maybe should be talked about for that 10th coaching spot slot. Because- well, it's also the idea, didn't mean to cut you off no, there, but I mean, support guys rarely get kind of the credit they deserve. And mm-hmm. to a certain extent, outside of superstars, super, super, superstars, it's support staff. It's those guys who are spending time with these kids who are, well, here's where you'll be eating. And well, here's where you'll put your equipment up. And here's, those are the guys who really get to go into the trenches and get their hands dirty a little bit. Yeah, I think he's, you're right. They're they're the unsung heroes, and, and Tino's been doing a real good job of that lately, and, and it's shown up. A lot of these kids are mentioning his name as a, as a crucial relationship in their recruitment. I think that's big, but they're also talking about Dossie, and we've talked time and time again about how people question him and, and this and that, and it's it's good to see him get things rolling again and start getting guys like Marquez Ezzard and, and Curry, who, I mean, two big-time guys. Those are two big-time guys to get. I know Curry's a 2019 guy. But still, I mean, that's a big pickup. It's a big pickup. You know, it's not exclusive to our show or our message boards or our articles. or It is a well-known fact that, you know, when you look at the wide receiver talent that Florida State's put out over the last decade, there are a couple really good names. But outside of that, you think with a quarterback guru like Jimbo Fisher is, with as good a quarterbacks have come through Florida State over the last 10 years, I mean, and I'll even throw EJ and Christian into that conversation, I mean, good college quarterbacks no matter how you want to slice it more wide receivers would want to come to play for florida state and more wide receivers would develop and become guys for florida state i'm not saying that we know for a fact that marquez ezard is going to come in right away and contribute i mean for all we know he could be a dud i mean the number one overall pick in the nfl draft could be a dud but the fact that lawrence doss is able to pull him in and the fact that he's able to pull in a 2019 guy in jalen curry i think is huge huge news for him He needed those guys. Coaching aside, you just need the depth horrendously. And to be able to get two very, very talented dudes in over the next two years, don't think that goes unnoticed. That's a big deal. Absolutely. And and the other thing is, too, I already kind of brought it up. When these dominoes start to fall, that's how you start ringing in the bigger and bigger fish. Recruiting momentum is such a real thing. I know people talk about it all the time. It's a big deal. When you start getting these guys Boom, boom. Florida State, Florida State, Florida State, Florida Woo. State. Yeah, right, right. Nice. I couldn't help myself. Sorry. Um, It's just, you know, it, it's going to help when you're going after those guys like Justin Fields. It, it just helps. And when you get it, if, you, if we're able to bring in Justin as well, let's see what it, things might get weird now. We might start getting some, we might start pulling in everyone. Again, I always like to keep it this way. Here's the thing. It's July. It's July. It's July. It's July. I'll always preface by saying that, but it's also worth noting, you you know, you kind of raise that eyebrow and you say, you're right. 
And what is it Justin Fields says over the weekend? It's not involving me, but something big's about to happen. I don't know if he meant Florida, and I don't know if he meant Cor- – is it Coral or Corral? Because Michael and I in the interview, we even debated that. We don't know. I, I would say I would say I go back and forth on it every time I pronounce it. Coral, Coral, whatever. I already tell you right now, since the guy committed, what he's been, on, what he's been like on Twitter going after my guy, Amari. I don't like him. I know, I know he's playing, but I don't like him. I don't like the guy. <laughs> well, dang. How about that? If you're if you're listening, Matt Corral slash Coral, whatever you are, whatever your real name is, <laughs> I already I already don't like you. I haven't even taken a snap. I haven't even put the uniform on. Don't like him. And you know we haven't even mentioned a guy that's a four star according to Rivals. He's a five star in other places. That's Akeem Dent, of course, related to Greg Dent. There's just so much talent that got stockpiled over this week. And the thing is, and you brought it up, and Michael and I are going to talk about this as well. Akeem, obviously a Florida guy, but Houston, the Houston area has provided you a commitment over the weekend. North Georgia, not South Georgia, North Georgia, you know, bulldog country, volunteer country, provided you a commitment. Texas, Florida, Georgia, California, the four most fertile recruiting beds in America. I mean, you can argue Louisiana brings you a lot of good talent, and it does. But if if I would put those four states up against anybody's four states, and you know for a very good fact, Florida, Texas, California is going to come up in everybody's list. That fourth one you can kind of debate. Florida State's already got star power in its own backyard. The fact that it's going out to Texas and the fact that it's going into Georgia and it's taking some of these kids, I think is a big testament to what the staff is doing. It's a big testament to listen. Everybody wants to go down to South Florida and get kids. Everybody wants to, I mean, look at South Florida now compared to what it was, heck, 20, 30 years ago. Michigan's got its fingers in there. Ohio State's got its fingers in there. Georgia, the schools in Texas, the schools in California, they're, they're Washington to Washington State are probably looking at a couple kids in South Florida. Everybody wants to come into your backyard. And the fact that Florida State is starting to go into others and take theirs, you raise some eyebrows and you say, all right, I see what's going on here. Good stuff. It's 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 good. Uh, it, it shows you that, I mean, not that it was really in question, but it just shows you that that allure and that pull and, and the the pageantry of Florida State is still very much alive. It's still, kids still want to wear the spear. They want to wear the garden gold. They want to be a, a part of a program like Florida State. And that's a big deal. Uh, I think that's a big deal. It can't go unsaid. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, uh, your best chance to win is to go out and get those kids. And you can, if you can take, and even better, when you take them out of other teams' backyards, they don't get them. Those are those are guys for for the for the longest time. You'd almost just you just assume you just sign them off to that school or that school because that, that uh, that's where they're from. That's that's where they're going to go. It is what it is. But no, you're you're able to go in and get and get the Cam Akers and the Jalen Currys and and those guys. It's just a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big time for college football. It's a big time for recruiting right before fall camp goes to know that you're about to go into a three month period where we've seen how Florida State football works. Three to four, five months when football season is on. I don't want to say recruiting gets put on the back burner, but it's certainly not at the. Football is the main priority, and football is the main priority everywhere. I know I'm kind of Captain Obvious when I say that, but you know what I mean. Florida State, more than others, tends to go a little quieter during football season as far as recruiting goes. And then in January, right up till signing day, it picks itself right back up. Now, does that change with an early signing period? I don't know. But here's what I do know. It's a talented, talented haul right before you get into the nitty-gritty of what you're actually trying to do. Win games, win championships, and you need more guys to do that. And while we're on the subject of recruiting, I know we've gone a little long here, so we'll just keep rolling with it. I did see something interesting, kind of off topic here. Nick Saban said to CBS Sports a couple days ago that he sees a future where kids might be sitting out of high school football seasons. And that kind of raises an eyebrow with me because he's trying to use Leonard Fournette and Christian McCaffrey as the example here. He says that he's kids are going to see those guys skipping out of bowl games and they're going to say to themselves, well, why do I need to participate in my senior season? I have an offer from Notre Dame. I have an offer from Alabama. I have an offer from USC. And I've got to say, it's not often that you get to say this about the guy who is basically the czar of college football. I think Nick Saban is dead wrong here. Yeah, I, I can't see that just because it's so, I mean, why does that matter? I mean, those scholarship offers can be dropped so quickly. You see it time and time again. You've seen kids get their spots pulled on National Signing Day. So 
anyone who is secure enough in themselves in their spot to think that there is not another kid out there who's going to go play that senior season. Uh, first off, I- I'm going to tell you right now, if I if there's a kid that is that entitled already by high school, his senior year of high school, and is saying, I don't want to play my senior year because I got the offer that I want, I am almost positive that it's going to turn off a lot, a lot of schools, even especially the school that you're possibly committed to. I, I see it, uh, you know, in, uh, for instance, in baseball, a lot of the time, I know kids will commit super early and the college and the high school kind of go hand in hand, especially with pitchers. And they'll say, hey, look, we want them throwing X amount of innings this year, this and that. And I could get I could get the 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 hey, I, I could see the game trending towards where maybe in high school football, like maybe they the coaches get more involved and say hey let's not let's not give the kid 40 carries a game well let's also face it a lot of power schools where elite level talent that would have that idea that i don't need to play football or i don't need to play my senior season they're blowing a lot of teams out they they're, they're blowing a lot of teams out of the water power programs win games they win games big and of course in the state of florida running clock happens and then those guys stop playing like i i don't see that future especially not here in the state of florida and it's also the idea that Listen, state titles mean something to kids. It means something to schools. It means something to your team. It means something for your senior year. How proud are you really going to be telling the grandkids that Meineke car care bowl? You know, I blew out my ACL and got picked in the seventh round and ended up on the practice squad three years later. But boy, we fought hard. It's kind of just a completely different scenario, to be honest. Um, You know, high school, too. I mean... I I understand I understand where like maybe his thought process you is. You get at. the point he's yeah, trying to I get make. what he's trying to say, but it's just it, high school has such a different dynamic to it. I just can't I can't really see that happening. But again, at the end of the day, he's Nick Saban, I'm not. What do I know? I think, so, I don't know. I think the point Saban's trying to make here and again, like you said, he's Saban, we're not. So he kind of gets to have his say. I I think the point that he's really trying to make here is, you know, has business decisions overrun the emotion and the heart of football that's why people supposedly like football right not not to sound all pardon my takey but people love the heart people love the grit people love all that stuff that's involved with this game because it is so brutal and because it is so hard to play and train yourself for but that being said there are just certain times where for some folks football is a business and for some folks football is just a passion i mean there are varying sides on both ends of that spectrum but i think to a certain extent for some guys a business decision is a business decision that doesn't mean they don't have heart that doesn't mean mccaffrey and fournette didn't love stanford and lsu and their coaches and their time it just meant listen man i've got a lot riding on this and i don't think a high schooler can say that i mean a scholarship is great and all but here's the thing it's not millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's your first step of getting there. And that's why I don't think that's ever going away. And I still think, by the way, as well, he, he, here's the difference. And here's where, where you can agree with McCaffrey and them. And you already brought it up. Uh, you're playing in the Sun Bowl. Who cares? All right. You saw Dalvin Cook play. You saw Jake Butt play because they're playing in the Orange Bowl. All right. It's different. If they were in the if they were in a big time bowl or if they were in the playoff, those guys would have played. They wouldn't have sat those out because they didn't set out regular season games either. It it wasn't like that. I mean, obviously, Fournette got hurt. So that's that's different. But still, it's it's just kind of a different scenario where you see guys get hurt on these on these shoddy fields that they're playing on half the time on, you know, and and freak. It's football. You can get hurt at any time. And we're talking about one game uh, to be the Sun Bowl champ. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll take my 10th overall draft selection for Christian McCaffrey and, and you know, it, I think it's worth it. I, I don't, I don't see the problem with that. I see, I think the problem would start coming is, uh, I'm not going to play the second half of my senior year. I'm not going to play regular season games. I'm not going to play in the playoff. I'm not going to play in the, then I'm going to start questioning your want to your drive, your, your, your want to like, How much do you like to play the game? If you're going to sit out regular season games because you think you've already put the the changes already in the bank and and you've done all you needed to do, I think that that would be where I would draw the line. We blew through this one. We don't even have time for while you were sleeping. I will give you I'll 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 give you some local scores, though. It's uh, the Rangers over the Rays six to five yesterday in Tampa Bay. Uh, And on top of that, it's the Dodgers over the Braves five to four in 10 innings out there in Los Angeles. Finally, the Cincinnati Reds defeat the Miami Marlins 6-3 at Great American Ballpark in 
Cincinnati. When we come back, it's Michael Langston. Extended recruiting conversation. What his eyes saw from these guys at Jimbo Fisher Camp over the week. Stick around. It's Wake Up War Chan on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Yes, Florida State just landed a five-star commitment. I don't see that anywhere online. How did you get that news so fast? I'm on the new Warchant.com app. I get news updates and scores pushed to my phone instantly. How much does it cost? It's free. Just go to iTunes or the Google Play Store, type in Warchant, and install it on your phone. That's it. A free app that keeps me constantly up to date on Florida State sports and recruiting? Wow, that makes it incredibly easy to follow my Seminoles and never miss out. With the app, you'll also get quick access to all the stories and features on Warchant, including the ever-popular message boards that feature thousands of fans talking about the Knowles. Warchant.com, your your ultimate ultimate Seminole Seminole source. source. Wake Up War Chat on 97.9 ESPN Radio is presented by TNT Golf Cart Supercenter, your one-stop shop for all your outdoor entertainment. Here's Ryan Kelly. All right, welcome back to Wake Up War Chan on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Ryan Kelly here with you, and... Well, as we mentioned off the top, this has been, if if you like recruiting and you like Florida State, this weekend has kind of been a match made in heaven for you. Five commitments to the Florida State Seminoles, three in 2018, two in 2019, all coming out of that Jimbo Fisher camp. And Michael Langston, our senior recruiting analyst, hops aboard. And Michael, last we talked, you did say, you know, this is the camp with the stars and this is some of the guys that... You really want to have on your squad, and now Florida State picks up five of them, three in the more immediate future, and two down the line. Yeah, it was a it was a really good week for them. Uh, really good. Uh, you know, we you know none of these were really total shocks. I guess the only surprise was would be the you know the three star defensive end Chaz Neal, and then um, and then kind of the development with Jonathan Huggins there with the great stuff. We'll get into those two. Uh, in a bit, but it was a, but it was a really good week for them uh, as far as the guys they got there, and then in getting, getting these top guys that are highly rated, you know, on the board already, you know, uh, that we'll cover. But I think it was a good week for them, really good. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Talent all across the board. Let's let's go ahead and talk about the 2019 guys, and then we'll get into the more immediate dudes. 2019, we'll start with, well, Hakeem Dent. And if that last name sounds familiar, well, it's because he's related to a former Seminole and Greg. Yeah, and uh, and that's the thing, you know, people always worry. You know, you know, they always, you always, you know, we saw that with Greg Reed is even when guys leave FSU and, you know, Greg Dent, I had an unfortunate situation that happened to FSU and, and let the program, but Jimbo does a really good job of keeping those guys in the family, even when they leave. Uh, he stays in good contact, and just the part of reason why. And and Greg had actually, um, I had actually talked to Akeem, and Akeem said Greg was a big part of that because Greg said you will not find a better family than Florida State. He said I will take care of you. It's a great place. He went to bat with FSU and said FSU stood by him even when everything happened. So I think that was a part two and two he's one of the best cornerbacks in the in the country for the two thousand nineteen class. Very good corner. Had a really good day when he worked out there. Was the best corner on that day and certainly stood out a lot and he'll add a lot to uh their secondary. He can play he can play nickel wide out. Probably probably a n probably all around just a pure shutdown corner. He's a guy that you know you can play right at the corner position, put him on the island and you'll feel really good with him out there. So certainly big getting a, a top shut down corner this early. And also big to get yourself a wide receiver. I want to talk about the 2019 guy, and then we'll move on to Marquez Ezzard, just because, and you and I were maybe talking about it, the, the, the up and down stuff with, you know, people always kind of wondered with Lawrence Dossie. It's, of course, always been a good position coach, but, it, recruiting's a thing that a lot of people have worried about and a lot of people have wondered about. And Jalen Curry, a four star wide receiver out of Stafford, Texas, he's six foot three, one ninety, one of two guys that Doss is able to pull the trigger on this weekend. Yeah, and I, I think a big assist in that area goes to um um support staff guy, um 
uh, offensive analyst Tino Sunseri. He did a really good job. He was he was the guy that deserves a lot of the credit. Dossie does too, and so does Tim Brewster, who recruits that area. Those are main recruits, but you know these support staff guys really are very important. And Tino really established a good early relationship. This one's been kind of done for a while. I think Jalen's loved FSU for a while, and he's going to be considered. I think he's going to be a five-star prospect when it when it all comes done. He's like four-star right now, but Rivals doesn't really put a number on where they're ranked as far as like number-wise. But currently, he's a four-star. But I think um, he's a kid that you could see being a five-star is one of the best uh, receivers in the country and had a had a short workout, but he was really good on the second day of the the camp and uh, definitely the best receiver that I saw there this week and just a tremendous pickup to get a guy like that. And it kind of falls back to what I told you last year and in the Marvin Wilson effect, you know, just having somebody like Marvin who he's close to along with Don Tavis Jackson, it's really opened up that door in Texas. You know, it's really helped them a lot. And, you know, to get two premier 2019 guys this early that can help you really get the momentum going in the next class. Uh, you know, it's a class that could, you know, be challenging for that number one spot in 2019. So very big, big Marvin Wilson effect because there, but also just getting two premier guys like that is, uh, is very big for FSU uh, and the momentum is cranking up. Marvin Wilson, of course, Episcopal High School in Houston, Texas. Uh, Stafford, literally a 25-minute drive. It's a suburb of Houston. So, yeah, you're right. Pipeline, friends, connections, it all means something. And when you're already in a talented region like you are in the state of Florida, if you're FSU, and you somehow open up a pipeline to another talented region like the state of Texas, uh, you're doing all right for yourself. Yeah, I think it's big. I mean, especially... We've talked about, you know, another, we'll get in the 18 kids, but 2018 receiver Jalen Waddle is also from Houston. He's close with those guys and Marvin. So it's just big anytime you get one in there. It just seems to, when you get one or two big guys, it seems to really open up an area. And that's what we tell you, tell people is like usually it only takes one. And if you get one big one, it just really just changes the dynamics of, of you of you being in that area and how much you can bring out of that. And I think we're seeing the seeing FSU uh, get the rewards of that right now. I mean, they're really, really rolling in, in that area in, in Houston. And certainly you want to, they want, probably want to expand it to different parts of Texas, but uh, certainly in Houston, they're, they're making a big splash. Of course, we said that there was a 2019 guy moving on to the 2018 wide receiver, and that's Mark Clez Ezard out of Stockbridge, Georgia, six foot one, 200 pounds. Rivals ranks him as the 36th best wide receiver in the country, 190 in the nation in terms of just all total. And, well, that puts him in the Rivals 250. Charles Kelly, Lawrence Dossie, those are, of course, the two guys that are on him. Another big get for the Knowles, especially when – as we already said off the top, wide receiver, it's a big need of concern. It's a big issue of concern. Not only that, I mean, he's a big physical dude. I mean, he's just, he can, you can send him across the middle. He's got great hands. He, he's uh, he's not real tall. He's probably like 6'1", six, 6'2", six, but he's around the 200-pound uh, mark, and he's very physical. You know, I, I talked to Chad Simmons, and he said he reminds him a lot of, you know, the Anquan Bolton in, 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 in the pros that you see where, physical um he's hard to bring down he's hard to cover he's a tough matchup because of how physical he is and and can just you can line him up anywhere he's such there's such versatility with that kid because he can you can line him up at slot you can slide him up at wide out but he's so strong that he's hard to contain because he he you can't really jam at the line too hard so he's a physical uh, guy that can really stretch the field in that area and you know FSU doesn't have a ton of those guys so having a guy like that really opened up those speed guys that FSU seems to start to, you know, really, uh, you know, starting to get in there in, in their program. So he's a very important guy because there's not many guys can do what he does in that physicality department. And he will add a lot to their offense. So that's a, that was a major pickup for him uh, the other day. And that's no shot on his legs either. I mean, he's a guy who's done some kick returner 
in his time over in Stockbridge. And you're right, just kind of seems to, when you, when you turn on the film, a guy that just kind of seems like you line him up anywhere and he can do what needs to be done. Yeah, not only that, just getting kids from Georgia and really good players. Uh, you know, he was a big Georgia lean early on and, you know, it took just one visit for FSU to really, you know, just blow away and catch his eye. And then he saw the offense and obviously the pro style offense that type that Jimbo runs is, is wide open where receivers not only catch the ball, but you can do, you know, bubble stuff. You can do in the rounds. Just there's a variety of ways that Jimbo gets his receivers involved. And, you know, I think uh, Marquez saw that. And, but just two to get a guy from Georgia and they're really making an emphasis in that area. You can really see that FSU is really making a big impact in the state of Georgia, mainly in the 2019 class, which I think they're really going to rack up on in Georgia, but also just just getting those top guys and kind of another place where once you get one or two, you know, a lot of those guys are closed. So it only opens up that floodgates for that area, and, and they're really seeing a – seeing a lot of push in that area and not just georgia though michael it's north georgia i mean if florida state pulls a dude out of thomasville or you know valdosta or a place like that nobody really seems that surprised but when florida state's going up to places like stockbridge which you know is basically yeah. a connector of atlanta that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty big deal it's a very big deal and it's a very big deal when you get a kid that you know that georgia wanted and and you you got him over there and you got in, you're not late, but just you got in there and you, you got one visit and it shows you the impact of the visit and, and what FSU does when they get kids on campus. And other kids see that and like, man, I need to go check that place out because everybody's wanting to go there. And, you know, we've gone over all the different 2019 guys and, and there's so much momentum coming from that 2019 class in the state of Georgia that I think FSU is going to really hit the jackpot in that area based on stuff I've heard uh, about the area. All right, let's move on. We'll talk about the two-star safety out of Mainland from Daytona Beach. That's Jonathan Huggins. I know uh, you have him listed as a defensive back. Rivals has him listed as a safety. I take it FSU wants to use him more as a corner? Yeah, I think he's more of a, probably a safety, okay. too. I'd probably agree with that. Uh, probably a strong safety. Very physical, and I think I – think, uh, I think FSU really, really liked him in the in the June camp, but I, we we discussed like his um, there was great concerns, but um, he took some took some on classes in summer. He's got his GPA to where it need to be to be on on par to where he he can make it. And I think what really too really sold FSU, and I've mentioned this many times, is people think the no ball thing they do, which is basically like rugby, two hand touch rugby. But it shows a lot of athletic ability, the instincts, the uh, reaction, how stiff somebody is, how athletic they are. And he participated in that in July. And I was told that really, when FSU watched him in Noble, that really changed things a lot, too, of, of how much they liked him because they saw how athletic he was. And he was a lot more athletic and flexible than they they originally thought because they thought even he's a big hitter, but... I don't think they realize just how athletic this kid is. And then then just the other day he picked up a Miami offer. So, you know, a lot of people are getting wind of how talented this kid is. And I think he'll eventually – I mean, he's a two-star, but that's only because, one, people had great concerns, and, two, nobody's really evaluated or saw this kid in the camp. And, you know, the more people see him now at Mainland, I think you'll see that kid – I'm pretty confident that kid's going to be a four-star by the time uh, everyone sees him. He's a very – it's one of those things where you know, FSU did their homework and really evaluated and studied this guy and, you know, did the evaluations earlier than anybody else. And, you know, he's a guy that I, I definitely see uh, blowing up and you'll see his his ranking just go higher and higher. And, you know, you mentioned it. Sometimes you find those diamonds in the rough and you do that. And that's why you have those support staffs. And that's why you have those folks who are able to scout out this talent. Because I think when when casual recruiting fan or just casual fan in general, or maybe just a diehard who doesn't follow recruiting, here's, yeah, yeah we got a two-star safety. You raise your eyebrows a little bit. And then, yeah, you're right. You see the film. I mean, we've got some of it pulled up in the studio right now. This guy is a thudder. He, he will, yeah, he, as, as Jimbo likes to say, he, he, we will wrap up and we will thud you. Yeah. 
he will strike you. He's a big striker, and that's what they immediately liked. But then, you know, obviously it was the great concerns, and that was really – I mean, once the great thing was done, it was like, okay, we really like this guy. Where is he going to sit on their board? Then they watched him athletically and no ball, and I think there was like, okay, this kid's really, really good, and, you know, there's no concerns with the grades anymore, it seems. So it's like there was no reason to hold back, and – so he, he jumped on board, and FSU's always been where he wanted to go. And I think once FSU checked off all the boxes, they knew for sure we got to get this guy. We want to get this guy early before anybody else does. And I think they kind of sensed what was about to happen, that this kid's going to blow up. All right, finally, let's talk about Mr. Neal. Yeah, Chaz is a big six six seven about 260, one of those big defensive ends. He's probably you know, one of those stash-type guys where – you know, he's got a ways to go. You're not counting on this guy to come in there and contribute right away. But I think uh, Brad Lowing really seemed to like, um, you know, how he moved and just what he would fit and, and how he can develop a guy more. You're taking him more on what you are what you, what you you can make him, not what he is now, because I know he's a raw guy that's going to take some time. But I think it was kind of one of those stash guys where he could be good later, but it's more potential-wise of what, what he can be. and not every guy you take is always going to be a first-year impact guy, and, and I think Chaz is kind of a guy, in their opinion, for FSU and Lawling, that they felt potential-wise they could see him being a, a guy that uh, they really like down the road. To a certain extent, if you're going to compare this to the draft, almost like a fifth-round type project, you know he's got talent, you know he's got potential, but it's about waiting and seeing. And it's no offense to Chaz, Michael, but... Uh, I think we all know what the bigger underlying story of this is, even though, like you said, he's maybe not a guy who's going to be an impact player right away. Florida State landed a kid out of Armwood High School. And for those who follow recruiting know that that's not something that happens much. And that area is not a place where Florida State's traditionally recruited well in their home state. So uh, is this a sign of things to come? Is How is the coaching staff seeing this? Are they seeing this as just another guy? Is this something they think can be a momentum push? When, when a guy from Armwood signs on the dotted – well, he doesn't sign on the dotted line, but when he commits to Florida State – yeah. How, how how does that coaching staff or how do the folks inside from what you know feel about that? I don't think it really matters. I mean, a lot of people put that together as the Armwood thing. I think it's more potential-wise what they see, whether he was from Armwood or he was from some other school. I think I don't think it was like to get in there, oh, we definitely got to sign a kid finally from Armwood. I think it was just the potential they saw, what, what Lawling can do with him and how he can develop him and what he can do with him. Chaz hasn't played the game because he got hurt last year, but I think their thinking is this kid's going to, we think a lot of people are going to offer him as well on potential, you know, once the season starts. So I think this is a guy they wanted to get in the fold where they felt comfortable that he could be a guy that later on, once they develop him at FSU, we're talking like two years down the line, that he could be a guy that can contribute to their defense. I think it was more about that. Finally, Michael, before I let you run, I did want to talk quarterback a little bit because we talked so much about it last time. It's Matt – is it Corral or Coral? I, I don't I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, and I have not heard a strict definition. But I haven't heard a straight one either. I'm going to go with Coral, Matt Coral. Okay, Matt Coral uh, is a five-star quarterback who committed to Florida over the weekend, for those mm-hmm. of you who don't know. And, of course, Florida was still kind of faintly in that Justin Fields conversation. Uh, do you think this kind of pushes him out completely? Yeah, I think that's kind of what Florida had focused on, where Florida spent most of their time, even with FNL, even though Justin went there, it was like more of the focus on, was on Coral because they felt like, yeah, hey, we're not going to get that kid. You know, we're not going to get Justin Fields. So we need to focus on a on him and on Coral, and I think they knew, like, one, we got to get somebody, and and he's a pretty good quarterback. He's not to the level of Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence. There's a big notch down after you go from, you know, Justin and Trevor Lawrence to the rest of the class as far as quarterback. So I think there's a big drop, but still a significant upgrade for them. Basically, you look at what they have, Frank's, isn't a guy that I think ready to play Felipe Frank. I mean, he's a guy that's a ways away. And you you got Malik Zaire uh, from Notre Dame, the grad transfer. But 
you're putting the guy that's a running quarterback into a pro style offense. So. And, and even if he is great, Michael, he's only a one year fix. Yeah, and he's a one year guy. So I think I think it was certainly an upgrade for them, but I think it was also a telling sign that yeah, we know we're not getting Justin Fields, so we need to put all our eggs and and make sure that Matt Corral knows he's our priority. So I think that was very important. So yeah, I would I would write them off and you know, we hear a lot of switch into Justin Fields. We hear a lot of, you know, positive uh trends when it comes to um how that visit with F S U went. It seemed to go really good and you know, I think um you know, if you held a gun in my head I would say today, you know, even though it's a tight battle, I think F S U uh is the is the team that's in the best position for, for Justin. I was actually going to ask you about Justin Fields, and you <laughs> took a ride. I wasn't going to threaten you with gun violence, but <laughs> but it's yeah. I think uh, I think the whole thing to me with him is just ever since he got the FSU offer for Justin, I think that he he's really wanted that offer, and it's always been big with him about who's going to develop him, who's going to get him ready. And I think when you look at it with Jimbo Fisher and and just the way he clicks with them, and he really clicks with the players. That's the thing I heard a lot, you know, this week on his visit was how much he connected with the players. Obviously, Georgia did the same thing on his visit, but I thought that was very important, as I mentioned going in the week, that FSU did that, and, you know, I think they accomplished that, and I think he sees what way he could be developed. So um, it's still, still a close battle, but at the same time, I think when you look at those factors, I mean, FSU is heads and heads and shoulders ahead of Georgia when it comes to development of quarterback. All right. Michael Langston, Senior Recruiting Analyst of Warchant.com. Of course, you can see some more advanced and detailed write-ups that Mr. Langston did about all these new commitments on Warchant.com. Some of it's premium material, though, and to get to that stuff, you need to be a Warchant member. And if you're not, and you want some access to that stuff, Warchant30, there's your promo code, gives you 30 free days of premium membership to warchant.com. Oh, yeah, and by the way, the premium recruiting board. Michael, thank you so much, my friend. <laughs> you got it. All right, folks, more after this. It's Wake Up War Chant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Here, Wake Up War Chant 97.9 ESPN Radio, brought to you by our friends at For the Table, Madison Social, Central, and Township. Early betting odds for the next head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels have Chad Morris listed as the favorite there. I don't know about that one, just because Ch- Chad's got a lot of money pouring in at SMU. He's the first guy to make SMU watchable in a, a long, long time, outside of the one good year June Jones had with them. He's a Texas guy, and those sanctions are going to be a disaster for a guy that was, what, three years ago considered the hottest assistant name in college football? I think it's going to be, I think the favorite, in my mind, has got. I know a lot of people have already talked about it, Les Miles. I think that would just be the perfect hire. But is Les going to touch that stuff? Uh, I I just read earlier that he said said he has a lot of interest. I mean, what does that really mean? I don't know. I think think if you're in Les Miles' situation, why not? But who knows? Who knows? Second best odds in this former Tennessee coach and orange pant wearer, Derek Dooley. Who of course, uh, used to the Delta region, former head coach at Louisiana Tech. And, I mean, Ole Miss is supposed to be a middling program, so I think Derek Dooley fits the bill. Or what about, uh, you saw, you saw, <laughs> I know this is going to happen, but you saw Lane, Lane Kiffin <laughs> automatically followed those three Ole Miss. That Man, was awesome. Lane stays trolling, and he's, listen, you can say what you want about Lane Kiffin, but you can't say he's not entertaining. Drew, thanks to you, my friend. Thank you. Hey, and thanks to you guys for listening. It's Mike and Mike coming up next here on 97.9 ESPN Radio Talk. <laughs> Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. 
Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source. Hey, thanks for downloading today's show. If you haven't already, uh, why don't you rate and subscribe us? We certainly do appreciate it, and of course, we appreciate you listening anyway, so just go ahead and click that right there. You know you want to. Come on. Come on. Thanks again for letting us do the show. We love giving you all the football, basketball, baseball, recruiting, all year round. Not just football season, not just spring practice, but hopefully giving you the freshest and newest FSU content every day. Thanks, guys.